Hi, Mr. G here again. In our last program, we learned about the various types of triangles and their characteristics. Today, we'll be working together again. We'll construct several of these triangles. I'm going to check out the triangle room while you go to the info site. As you can see, we'll need a sharp pencil, a straight edge, a protractor, a right angle checker, and something to cover your desk with so you don't scratch it. Okay, now that we've assembled the tools we'll need, let's get started. Using your straight edge, construct a line segment about two or three inches long, or seven or eight centimeters. Now label one end of the segment as A. Label the other end point as B. Next, I want you to open your compass so that it's the same length as the segment. Good. Make sure you don't poke your finger with the sharp point of the compass. Now place the sharp point of your compass at point A. Now, construct an arc above the segment that's around the midpoint of AB. Good. Now, without changing the size of your compass, don't let it move, place the sharp point of the compass at point B. Good. Now, create another arc above segment AB. If you've done it correctly, the two arcs should intersect. Good. Now, label this new point of intersection C. Then, pick up your straight edge. Create a new segment connecting points A and C. Good. Now, using your straight edge, connect points B and C. Very good. You have now created a triangle with three sides equal in length. This is called an equilateral triangle. All three sides are of equal length, and each of the three angles measure 60 degrees. And we can check this by measuring the angles with our protractor. If the rays of the triangle do not reach the edge of your protractor, you may extend the rays. This won't change the size of the angles. Now, good job. Let's create an isosceles triangle. Using your straight edge again, create another line segment about two or three inches long, or seven or eight centimeters. Let's label this segment DE. One end point D, the other E. Now open your compass so that it's a little larger or smaller, it doesn't really matter, than the length of DE. So take your compass, open a little wider or a little shorter than what the segment is. If you make it smaller, make sure the compass extends more than halfway across DE. If it's not at least halfway across, you'll not be able to create intersecting arcs. When you have the compass set, place the sharp point of it at point D. Good. Now make an arc above or below the line segment. That will be somewhere near the midpoint of DE. Now, don't change the size of your compass. Place the sharp point of your compass at point E and create another arc that intersects the first arc. Very good. Now, label this point where the arc intersects as point F. Now, using your straight edge, create a line segment connecting points D and F. How are you doing? I hope you're able to follow along okay.
Now, create another line segment that connects points F and E. You have now successfully constructed an isosceles triangle. Good job. Two sides are the same length, and two angles are equal in degrees. And you can check these two congruent angles by using your protractor. Angles F, D, E, and angle F, E, D are congruent. Remember, all triangles have how many degrees? You are so smart. That's correct, 180. The final triangle that we'll construct today is the obtuse triangle. Once again, I want you to construct a line segment about two or three inches long or seven or eight centimeters. Now, label this segment X, Y. Now, choose a point that is outside the area of XY. Let's put our point right here. Now label this point Z. Now, connect points Z and X. Also, connect points Z and Y. Very good. You've successfully constructed an obtuse triangle. X, Y, Z is an obtuse angle. It measures more than 90 degrees, but it's less than 180. Now, I want you to put your pencil down and visualize what we have done to construct these three triangles. Look at your triangles and follow along as if you were constructing them again. To construct the equilateral triangle, we simply open our compass the same size as our line segment and constructed arcs above or below the segment. Notice we did not let the width of our compass change as we move the compass from one end point of the segment to the other. Then we connected our intersecting arcs with both ends of the segment. Trace a triangle with your finger. You have three sides equal in length. Now point to your three angles. Are they all the same size? You betcha. They are each 60 degrees. Now, look at your second triangle, the isosceles triangle. All we did was make our compass bigger or smaller than the length of our segment. Then, we placed the compass at one end point and made an arc. Then we placed the compass at the other end point and constructed another arc, which intersected the first arc. We connected the intersecting arcs with our two end points and bingo, we have an isosceles triangle. Point to the two sides that are the same length. Now point to the two angles that are the same. Good job. Now let's look at our third triangle the obtuse. We merely chose a point somewhere outside the area of our segment and labeled this new point. Then we connected this point with both ends of our segment and voila, an obtuse triangle. Trace your obtuse angle with your finger. I hope you enjoy constructing these polygons as much as I do. You've done a great job today in our program on triangles. In our next program, we'll learn about the four-sided polygons called quadrilaterals. Until then, this is Mr. G. I'll see you next time.